The persecution of Serbs in the independent state of Croatia, also known as the Serbian Genocide Serbian, Genocide Nad Serbima Genocide Nad Sr Bima included the extermination, expulsion and forced religious conversion of hundreds of thousands ethnic Serbs by the genocidal policies of the Ustashi regime in the independent state of Croatia NDH between 1941 and 1945, during World War II. The Ustashi regime systematically murdered approximately 300,000 to 500,000 Serbs out of which up to 52,000 died at the Jasonovic concentration camp, according to current estimates. <laughs> <laughs> Background <laughs> Interwar period Ethnic tensions between Croats and Serbs can be traced back to the Great Schism of 1054. During the time of the Austrian Empire, many Croats came to resent the privileges granted to Serbs living in the Croatian military frontier. Following the collapse of Austria-Hungary in the final days of World War I, the Croat and Slovene-dominated state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs was established. Having fought on the side of the Central Powers during the war, ethnic Croats and Slovenes, who formed the majority of the state's population, were viewed unfavorably by Western nations and as such they failed to gain recognition from the great powers. This left them no choice but to join a union largely dominated by ethnic Serbs, which came to be known as the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. Upon its creation, the state was composed of 6 million Serbs, 3.5 million Croats and 1 million Slovenes. Being the largest ethnic group, the Serbs favored a centralized state, whereas Croats, Slovenes and Bosnian Muslims did not, approved on 28 June 1921 and based on the Serbian Constitution of 1903, the so-called Vitovdan Constitution established the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes as a parliamentary monarchy under the Serbian Karadurdovic dynasty. Belgrade was chosen as the capital of the new state, assuring Serb and Orthodox Christian political dominance. In 1928, Croatian Peasant Party HSS leader Stjepan Radic was assassinated on the floor of the country's parliament by a Montenegrin Serb leader and People's Radical Party NRS politician Punisa Rasic. The following year King Alexander I proclaimed 6 January dictatorship and renamed his country the Kingdom of Yugoslavia to de-emphasize its ethnic makeup. Yugoslavia was divided into nine administrative units called Bonavinas, six of which had ethnic Serb majorities. In 1931, the king issued a decree which allowed the Yugoslav parliament to reconvene on the condition that only pro-Yugoslav parties were allowed to be represented in it. Marginalized, far-right and far-left movements thrived. The Ustase, a Croatian fascist party, emerged as the most extreme movement of these. The Ustase were driven by a deep hatred of Serbs and Serbdom and claimed that Croats and Serbs were separated by an unbridgeable cultural gulf which prevented them from ever living alongside each other. They organized the so-called Velvet Uprising in 1932, assaulting a police station in the village of Bruzani in Lika. The police responded harshly to the assault and harassed the local population. In 1934, the Ustase cooperated with Bulgarian, Hungarian and Italian right-wing extremists to assassinate Alexander while he visited the French city of Marseille. Alexander's cousin, Prince Paul, took the regency until Alexander's son, Peter II, turned 18. Ustase leader Ante Pavelic believed that the assassination would cause Yugoslavia to disintegrate. Instead, countries that had assisted the organization, such as Italy and Hungary, cracked down on its members, arrested them, and destroyed their training camps at Yugoslavia's behest. According to historian Slavko Goldstein, the Ustase planned to commit a genocide against ethnic Serbs for years prior to the outbreak of World War II. One of Pavelic's main ideologues, Miho Babic, wrote in 1932, Croatian opposition to a centralized Yugoslavia continued following Alexander's assassination, culminating with the signing of the kvetkovic masic Agreement by Croatian politician Vladko Masic and Yugoslav Prime Minister Dragasa Kvetkovic on 26 August 1939. By signing the agreement, Belgrade sought to accommodate moderate Croats through the creation of a largely autonomous Bonavina of Croatia which covered 27% of Yugoslavia's territory and included 29% of its population. It also ensured that Masic became Yugoslavia's deputy premier. Ultimately, the agreement was not successful. 
It led to other Yugoslav ethnic groups demanding a status similar to that of Croatia and failed to satisfy right-wing Croats such as those that had joined the Ustase, who wanted a fully independent Croatian state. The Ustase were enraged by the very notion of Masic having negotiated with Belgrade, denouncing him as a sell-out. Right-wing Croats quickly orchestrated anti-Serbian incidents across the newly formed Bonavina, and in June 1940, a Croatian National Socialist Party was established in Zagreb. On 25 March 1941, Yugoslavia bowed to German pressure and signed the Tripartite Pact in an effort to avoid war with the Axis powers. Two days later, a group of Serbian nationalist Royal Yugoslav Air Force officers organized a coup d'état to depose Prince Paul and the government of Dragasa Kvetkovic. Peter was declared to be of age and was elevated to the throne. Upon hearing news of the coup, Adolf Hitler immediately ordered the invasion of Yugoslavia. Topic. Creation of the NDH In April 1941, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was invaded by the Axis powers, and the puppet state known as the Independent State of Croatia NDH was created, ruled by the Ustase regime. The ideology of the Ustase movement was a blend of Nazism, Catholicism, and Croatian ultranationalism. The Ustase supported the creation of a Greater Croatia that would span to the Dina River in the outskirts of Belgrade. The movement emphasized the need for a racially pure Croatia and promoted the extermination of Serbs who were viewed as ethnic foreigners, Jews and Gypsies. A major ideological influence on the Croatian nationalism of the Ustase was the 19th century nationalist Ante Starcevic. Starcevic was an advocate of Croatian unity and independence and was both anti Habsburg and anti Serb. He envisioned the creation of a greater Croatia that would include territories inhabited by Bosniaks, Serbs, and Slovenes, considering Bosniaks and Serbs to be Croats who had been converted to Islam and Eastern Orthodox Christianity and considering the Slovenes to be mountain Croats. Starcevic argued that the large Serb presence in the territories that were claimed by a greater Croatia was the result of recent settlement, which had been encouraged by the Habsburg rulers, along with the influx of groups like Vlachs who took up Eastern Orthodox Christianity and identified themselves as Serbs. The Ustase used Starcevic's theories to promote the annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina to Croatia and they recognized Croatia as having two major ethnocultural components, Catholic Croats and Muslim Croats, because the Ustase saw the Islam of the Bosnian Muslims as a religion which "...keeps true the blood of Croats." Armed struggle, genocide and terrorism were glorified by the group. Alexander Korb wrote Independent state of Croatia After Nazi forces entered into Zagreb on April 10, 1941 Pavelic's closest associate Slavko Kvaternik proclaimed the formation of the Independent State of Croatia on a Radio Zagreb broadcast. Meanwhile, Pavelic and several hundred Ustase volunteers left their camps in Italy and travelled to Zagreb, where Pavelic declared a new government on 16 April 1941. He accorded himself the title of Poglavnik, German, Führer, English, Chief Leader. The independent state of Croatia was declared to be on Croatian ethnic and historical territory. This country can only be a Croatian country, and there is no method we would hesitate to use in order to make it truly Croatian and cleanse it of Serbs, who have for centuries endangered us and who will endanger us again if they are given the opportunity. The NDH combined most of modern Croatia, all of modern Bosnia and Herzegovina and parts of modern Serbia into an Italian-German quasi-protectorate. NDH authorities, led by the Ustase militia, then implemented genocidal policies against the Serb, Jewish and Romani populations living in the new state. The Ustashi cruelty and sadism shocked even Nazi commanders. Viktor Gudik made several speeches in early summer 1941, calling Serbs former enemies and unwanted elements to be cleansed and destroyed, and also threatened Croats who did not support their cause. In 1941 the usage of the Cyrillic script was banned, and in June 1941 began the elimination of Eastern Serbian words from the Croatian language, as well as the shutting down of Serbian schools. Ante Pavelic ordered, through the Croatian State Office for Language, the creation of new words from old roots some which are used today, and purged many Serbian words. 
Ustashi militias and death squads. In the summer of 1941, Ustashi militias and death squads burnt villages and killed thousands of civilian Serbs in the countryside in sadistic ways with various weapons and tools. Men, women, children were hacked to death, thrown alive into pits and down ravines, or set on fire in churches. Some Serb villages near Srebrenica and Ozran were wholly massacred, while children were found impaled by stakes in villages between Vlasenica and Kladanj. Massacres A large number of massacres were committed by the Ustashi. Some of the more notable ones were Gudovac Massacre the 28th of April 1941, 184 to 196 Serbs summary executed, after arrest orders by Kvaternik. Glina Massacre 11 to 12 May 1941, 260 to 300 Serbs herded into an Orthodox church and shot, after which it was set on fire. Glina massacres, the 30th of July to the 3rd of August 1941, 200 Serbs willing to convert to Catholicism in return for amnesty, massacred at an Orthodox church. Between 500, 2,000 other Serbs later massacred in neighboring villages by Luburic's forces. Topic: <laughs> Concentration camps. The Ustashi set up temporary concentration camps in the spring of 1941 and laid the groundwork for a network of permanent camps in autumn. The creation of concentration camps and extermination campaign of Serbs had been planned by the Ustashi leadership long before 1941. In Ustashi state exhibits in Zagreb, the camps were portrayed as productive and peaceful work camps, with photographs of smiling inmates. Croatia was the only Axis satellite to have erected camps specifically for children. Serbs, Jews, and Romani were arrested and sent to concentration camps such as Jasonovic, Stara Gradiska, Gospic, and Jadovno. There were 22 to 26 camps in NDH in total. Special camps for children were those at Sisak, Gornja Rijeka, and Jastrebersko, while Stara Gradiska held thousands of children and women. The largest and most notorious camp was the Jasonovic Stara Gradiska complex, the largest extermination camp in the Balkans. An estimated 100,000 inmates perished there, most Serbs. Vekoslav Mox Luburic, the commander in chief of all the Croatian camps, announced the great efficiency. Of the Jasonovic camp at a ceremony on 9 October 1942, and also boasted, We have slaughtered here at Jasonovic more people than the Ottoman Empire was able to do during its occupation of Europe. Bounded by rivers and two barbed wire fences making escape unlikely, the Jasonovic camp was divided into five camps, the first two closed in December 1941, while the rest were active until the end of the war. Stara Gradiska Jasonovic v held women and children. The Siglana Brickyards, Jasonovic III camp, the main killing ground and essentially a death camp, had 88% mortality rate, higher than Auschwitz's 84.6%. A former brickyard, a furnace was engineered into a crematorium, with witness testimony of some, including children, being burnt alive and stench of human flesh spreading in the camp. Luburic had a gas chamber built at Jasonovic V, where a considerable number of inmates were killed during a three-month experiment with sulfur dioxide and Zyklon B, but this method was abandoned due to poor construction. Still, that method was unnecessary, as most inmates perished from starvation, disease especially typhus, assaults with mallets, maces, axes, poison and knives. The Serbosjek Serb cutter, was a glove with an attached curved blade designed to cut throats. Large groups of people were regularly executed upon arrival outside camps and thrown into the river. Unlike German-run camps, Jasonovic specialized in brutal one-on-one -on -one violence, such as guards attacking barracks with weapons and throwing the bodies in the trenches. The infamous camp commander Filipovic, dubbed Fra Sotona, Brother Satan, and the personification of evil, on one occasion drowned Serb women and children by flooding a cellar. Filipovic and other camp commanders such as Dinko Sakic and his wife Nada Sakic, the sister of Mox Luburic, used ingenious torture. There were throat-cutting contests of Serbs, in which prison guards made bets among themselves as to who could slaughter the most inmates. It was reported that guard and former Franciscan priest Petr Berzica won a contest on 29 August 1942 after cutting the throats of 1,360 inmates. 
Inmates were tied and hit over the head with mallets and half alive hung in groups by the granite ramp crane, their intestines and necks slashed, then dropped into the river. When the partisans and allies closed in at the end of the war, the Ustashi began mass liquidations at Jasonovic, marching women and children to death, and shooting most of the remaining male inmates, then torched buildings and documents before fleeing. Topic. Religious persecution The Ustashi viewed religion and nationality as closely linked, while Roman Catholicism and Islam Bosnian Muslims were viewed as Croats were recognized as Croatian national religions, Eastern Orthodoxy was deemed inherently incompatible with the Croatian state project. They saw Orthodoxy as hostile because it was identified as Serb. On 3 May 1941 a law was passed on religious conversions, pressuring Serbs to convert to Catholicism and thereby adopt Croat identity. This was made on the eve of Pavelic's meeting with Pope Pius XII in Rome. The Catholic Church in Croatia, headed by Archbishop Aloysius Stepanak, greeted it and adopted it into the Church internal law. The term, Serbian Orthodox, was banned in mid-May as incompatible with state order, and substituted it with, Greek Eastern Faith. By the end of September 1941, about half of the Serbian Orthodox clergy, 335 priests, had been expelled. Ustashi propaganda legitimized persecution partly based on historical Catholic Orthodox struggle for domination in Europe and Catholic intolerance towards the schismatics. Following Serb insurgency provoked by Ustashi terror, killing and deportation campaign, the State Directorate for Regeneration launched a program in the autumn of 1941 aimed at mass forced conversion of Serbs. Already in the summer, the Ustashi had closed or destroyed most of the Serbian Orthodox churches and monasteries and deported, imprisoned or murdered Orthodox priests and bishops. The conversions were meant to Croatianize and permanently destroy the Serbian Orthodox Church. The Vatican was not opposed to the forced conversions. On 6 February 1942 Pope Pius XII privately received 206 Ustashes in uniforms and blessed them, giving symbolical support to their acts. On 8 February 1942 envoy to the Holy See Rusinovic said that the Holy See joyed over forced conversions. Cardinal Luigi Maglioni, the Holy See Secretary, encouraged the Croatian bishops in a 21 February 1942 letter to speed up the conversions, and also stressed that the «orthodox term» be replaced with terms «apostates or schismatics». Many fanatic Catholic priests joined the Ustashi, blessed and supported their work, and participated in killings and conversions. In 1941 42, some 200,000 or 240,000 to 250,000 Serbs were converted to Roman Catholicism, although most temporarily. Converts would sometimes be killed anyway, often in the same churches they were rebaptized. 85% of the Serbian Orthodox clergy was killed or expelled. In Lika, Kordon and Benija alone, 172 Serbian Orthodox churches were closed, destroyed, or plundered. On 2 July 1942, the Croatian Orthodox Church was founded in order to replace the institutions of the Serbian Orthodox Church. After the matter of forced conversion had become extremely controversial, many Catholic bishops and priests in Croatia openly supported the Ustashi actions, and also, there were no condemnations of the crimes, public or private, by the Catholic hierarchy. The Croatian Catholic Church and Vatican in fact viewed policies against Serbs as advantageous to Roman Catholicism. Nevertheless, historian Tomasevic praised some of the public statements and deeds made by Archbishop Aloysius Stepanak, but noted that there were shortcomings in statements and actions regarding genocidal actions against the Serbs and the Serbian Orthodox Church. In his diary, Stepanak said that Serbs and Croats are of two different worlds, North and South Pole, which will never unite as long as one of them is alive." Along with other similar views. Croatia's rehabilitation of Stepanak in 2016 met negative reaction in Serbia and Republika Srpska. Topic. Expulsion An estimated 120,000 Serbs were deported from NDH to German-occupied Serbia, and 300,000 fled by 1943. The general plan was to have prominent people deported first, so their property could be nationalized and the remaining Serbs could then be more easily manipulated. By the end of September 1941, about half of the Serbian Orthodox clergy, 335 priests, had been expelled. 
Topic: Victims and death toll. During the war and during Tito's Yugoslavia, various numbers were given for overall war casualties. Estimations by Holocaust memorial centers also vary. As concluded by historian Rory Yeomans, the most conservative estimates put the lower number of 300,000 and possibly as many as 500,000 Serbs killed by Ustashi death squads, executed, or perished at concentration camps. Tomasevich said that the exact number of victims in Yugoslavia is impossible to determine. Sabrina P. Remet estimated at least 300,000 Serbs massacred by the Ustase. Demographer Bogoljub Kočević, author of the most serious study of World War II victims in Yugoslavia, estimated 370–410,000 Serbs who died in NDH. The number of victims at the Jasonovic concentration camp remains a matter of debate, but current estimates put the number at around 100,000, about half of which were Serbs. In Serbia and in the eyes of Serbs, the Ustashi atrocities constituted a genocide. Some Western and Jewish authors acknowledge it as a genocide, or, if not calling it explicitly, genocide, call Ustashi policies and acts, genocidal. R. Lemkin also called Hungarian and Bulgarian policies against Serbs genocidal. Catholic extremism was at the heart of Ustase policy, and this meant that many Serbs in the NDH were given the option of either converting to Catholicism or face deportation to a concentration camp. Serbs who refused to renounce the Orthodox Christian faith ultimately faced death in concentration camps across the NDH, especially at Jasonovic concentration camp. In the post-war era, the Serbian Orthodox Church considered that the Serbian victims of this genocide were Martis. As a result, the Serbian Orthodox Church celebrates Holy New Martis of Jasonovic concentration camp on September 13. Topic. Aftermath. After World War II, most of the remaining Ustashi went underground or fled to countries such as Australia, Canada, the United States and Germany, with the assistance of Roman Catholic clerics and grassroots supporters. The Yugoslav communist government did not use the Jasonovic camp as was done with other European concentration camps, most likely due to Serb-Croat relations. Tito's government attempted to let the wounds heal and forge brotherhood and unity in the peoples. Tito himself was invited and passed Jasonovic several times, but did never visit the site. Topic. Ratlines, terrorism and assassinations With the partisan liberation of Yugoslavia, many Ustashi leaders fled and took refuge at the College of San Girolamo degli Illerici near the Vatican. Catholic priest and Ustashi Kronislav Draganovic directed the fugitives from San Girolamo. The U.S. State Department and Counterintelligence Corps helped war criminals to escape, and assisted Draganovic who later worked for the American intelligence in sending Ustashi abroad. Many of those responsible for mass killings in NDH took refuge in South America, Portugal, Spain and the United States. Luburic was assassinated in Spain in 1969 by an UDBA agent. Artukovic lived in Ireland and California until extradited in 1986 and died of natural causes in prison. Dinko Sakic and his wife Nada lived in Argentina until extradited in 1998, Dinko dying in prison and his wife released. Draganovic also arranged Gestapo functionary Klaus Barbie's flight. In the Croat diaspora, the Ustashi became heroes. Ustashi emigre terrorist groups in the diaspora such as Croatian Revolutionary Brotherhood and Croatian National Resistance carried out assassinations and bombings, and also plane hijackings, throughout the Yugoslav period. Notable war criminals Ante Pavelic founder and supreme leader of Ustashi. Hidden Italy, Argentine, Chile and Spain. Survived assassination attempts. Andrija Artukovic (1899–1988), Croatian Minister of Interior, died in Croatian custody. Slavko Kvaternik (1878–1947), Ustashi military commander in chief, executed by Yugoslav authorities. Dido Kvaternik (1910–1962), Ustashi secret police leader, son of Slavko. Died in car accident in Argentina. 
Juri Francetic (1912–1942), Ustashi commander of the Black Legion, ordered massacres of Serbs in Bosnia, plain down by partisans. Max Luburic (1914–1969), commander of the Ustase Defense Brigades, Ustaska Odbrana and Jasonovic camp, murdered by colleague in Spain. Mile Budak (1889–1945), Croatian politician and chief Ustashi ideologist, executed for war crimes and crimes against humanity on the 7th of June 1945. Dinko Sakic (1921–2008), Ustase leader, commander of Jasonovic, fled to Argentina but was eventually extradited, tried, and sentenced in 1999 by Croatian authorities to 20 years in prison, dying in prison. Nata Sakic, Jasonovic camp guard, sister of Mox Luburic and wife of Dinko. She escaped punishment as Argentina refused to extradite her. Tomislav Filipovic Majstorovic, born Miroslav Filipovic, Franciscan friar and Jasonovic camp commander infamous for his sadism and cruelty, known as Brother Satan, captured by partisans, tried and executed in 1946. Petr Berzica 1917, Franciscan friar who won a contest on 29 August 1942 after cutting the throats of 1,360 inmates at the Jasonovic camp. His post-war fate is unknown. Controversy Revisionism in modern-day Croatia Some Croats, including politicians, have attempted to minimize the magnitude of the genocide perpetrated against Serbs in the World War II puppet state of Germany, the independent state of Croatia. By 1989, the future president of Croatia, Franjo Tudman, who had been a partisan during World War II, had embraced Croatian nationalism, and published Horrors of War, Historical Reality and Philosophy, in which he questioned the official number of victims killed by the Ustase during the Second World War. In his book, Tudman claimed that fewer than 30,000 people died at Jasonovic. Tudman also estimated that a total of 900,000 Jews had perished in the Holocaust. Tudman's views and his government's toleration of Eustace's symbols frequently strained relations with Israel. Nonetheless, in his book, he did confirm that genocide happened, it is a historical fact that the Ustasha regime of NDH, in its implementation of the plan to reduce the hostile Serb Orthodox people in Croatian lands, committed a large genocidal crime over the Serbs, and proportionately even higher over the Roma and Jews, in the implementation of Nazi racial politics. Possibly the most overt and well-known example of ultranationalist, anti-Serb sentiment in contemporary Croatian public life is Thompson, a Croatian rock band that has been protested against on numerous occasions for having sung Eustace songs, most notably Jasonovic i Gratis Kastara. People publicly displaying Eustace affiliations at major Thompson concerts in Croatia and elsewhere is a frequent occurrence, leading to complaints from the Simon Wiesenthal Center. In 2006, a video was leaked showing Croatian President Stipe Mesic giving a speech in Australia in the early 1990s, in which he said that the Croats had won a great victory on April 10, the date of the formation of the independent state of Croatia in 1941, and that Croatia needed to apologize to no one for Jasonovic. Later on, Mesic apologized for his indecent statement and stated that he undoubtedly considered anti-fascism to be the basis of modern-day Croatia, appreciated Yugoslav partisans and considered it necessary to "...reaffirm anti-fascism as a human and civilization commitment in the function of the unavoidable condition for the building of a democratic Croatia, a country of equal citizens." On 17 April 2011, in a commemoration ceremony, Croatian President Ivo Josipovic warned that there were "...attempts to drastically reduce or decrease the number of Jasonovic victims," adding, "...faced with the devastating truth here that certain members of the Croatian people were capable of committing the cruelest of crimes, I want to say that all of us are responsible for the things that we do." At the same ceremony, then-Croatian Prime Minister Jadranka Kasor said, there is no excuse for the crimes and therefore the Croatian government decisively rejects and condemns every attempt at historical revisionism and rehabilitation of the fascist ideology, every form of totalitarianism, extremism and radicalism. 
Pavelic's regime was a regime of evil, hatred and intolerance, in which people were abused and killed because of their race, religion, nationality, their political beliefs and because they were the others and were different. Revisionism in the Croat diaspora In 2008, in Melbourne, Australia, a Croat restaurant held a celebration to honour Eustace leader Ante Pavelic. The event was an "...outrageous affront both to his victims and to any persons of morality and conscience who oppose racism and genocide," Dr. Ephraim Zuroff, of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, stated. According to local press reports, a large photograph of Pavelic was hung in the restaurant, T-shirts with his picture and that of two other commanders in the 1941-45 Eustace government were offered for sale at the bar, and the establishment of the independent state of Croatia was celebrated. Zuroff noted this was not the first time that Croatian émigrés in Australia had openly defended Croat Nazi war criminals. It is high time that the authorities in Australia find a way to take the necessary measures to stop such celebrations, which clearly constitute racist, ethnic, and anti-Semitic incitement against Serbs, Jews, and Gypsies. Eustace Gold The Eustace had sent large amounts of gold that it had plundered from Serbian and Jewish property owners during World War II into Swiss bank accounts. Of a total of 350 million Swiss francs, about 150 million was seized by British troops, however, the remaining 200 million, ca. $47 million reached the Vatican. In October 1946, the American intelligence agency SSU alleged that these funds are still held in the Vatican Bank. This matter is the crux of a recent class action suit against the Vatican Bank and other defendants. Legacy Topic. Yugoslav Wars World War II and especially its ethnic conflicts have been deemed instrumental in the later Yugoslav Wars Topic. Commemoration Israeli President Moshe Katsev visited Jasonovic in 2003. His successor, Shimon Peres, paid homage to the camp's victims when he visited Jasonovic on 25 July 2010 and laid a wreath at the memorial. Peres dubbed the Eustace's crimes to be a "...demonstration of sheer sadism." The Jasonovic Memorial Museum reopened in November 2006 with a new exhibition designed by a Croatian architect, Helena Paver and Jiric, and an educational center, designed by the firm Produkcija. The Memorial Museum features an interior of rubber-clad steel modules, video and projection screens, and glass cases displaying artifacts from the camp. Above the exhibition space, which is quite dark, is a field of glass panels inscribed with the names of the victims. The New York City Parks Department, the Holocaust Park Committee and the Jasonovic Research Institute, with the help of then-Congressman Anthony Weiner DNY, established a public monument to the victims of Jasonovic in April 2005 the 60th anniversary of the liberation of the camps. The dedication ceremony was attended by ten Yugoslavian Holocaust survivors, as well as diplomats from Serbia, Bosnia and Israel. It remains the only public monument to Jasonovic victims outside the Balkans. To commemorate the victims of the Kragujevac massacre, the whole of Sumeris, where the killings took place, was turned into a memorial park. There are several monuments there, the monument to the murdered schoolchildren and their teachers, the Broken Wing monument, the monument of pain and defiance and the monument 100 for 1, the monument of resistance and freedom. Serbian poet Dasanka Maksimovic wrote a poem about the massacre titled Kr Vava Bajka a bloody fairy tale. See also Anti-Serb sentiment Anti-Eastern Orthodox sentiment Catholic clergy involvement with the Eustace The Holocaust Topic. Annotations Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. External links 
Genocide in Croatia 1941–1945", pdf. Serbian National Defense Council of Canada, Serbian National Defense Council of America, 1976. OCLC 26383552